Hi YouTube, today I'm going to do a comparison between two rivalry companies. I've done videos on the history of both of the companies and what I'm going to do is show some of the differences and similarities in double action revolvers made by Colt and Smith & Wesson. Now both of these companies are mainly known for making their revolvers. And yes, I understand that both of these companies make other kind of firearms like semi-automatics and rifles and all that, but their main staple was making revolvers in the beginning, and that's what I'm going to compare. And since we all live in the 21st century now, we're going to look at their double action revolvers. So before I get started here, I'm going to show you each and every one of these revolvers are not loaded and there's no ammunition in here. Nobody can get hurt. No bullets can fly through the camera and hurt any of the viewers. So you can rest assured that you are safe to continue viewing this video. So basically what we have here, we have two 357s and we have two 44 magnums and the reason i chose these is one of these companies is responsible for inventing both cartridges and yes folks it is smith and wesson the two here in the middle this is a smith and wesson model 629 and this is a smith and wesson model 586 this one is 44 magnum this one is 357 magnum and Smith & Wesson is the one that invented both of those cartridges. Now, the 357 Magnum was invented in 1935, and the 44 Magnum was invented in 1955. So, I'm not going to discuss which one of these I think is better. All I'm going to do is show you the differences in different ways that people do things. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Colt revolvers. Now this is a Colt Anaconda. This is chambered in 44 Magnum. And I'm gonna show you how a Colt um, revolver operates. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna show you is how the cylinder opens. On a Colt revolver, all cylinders, you pull back on this little handle and the cylinder comes out. And that's very contrast to how a Smith & Wesson revolver works. Now, I'm going to pick up the Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum revolver and show you that you push in on this to open the cylinder on a Smith & Wesson revolver. So that's one very big difference. Now, a lot of people that shoot revolvers, a lot of people lean more towards Smith & Wesson when they shoot competition. And I'm going to tell you why. The Smith & Wesson people's argument it is it's more intuitive that when you're shooting competition and you shot the last round is to push on this without changing your grip stance, open the revolver up and empty it. Now, I believe that that's complete BS. <laughs> I've shot more Colt revolvers than I ever have Smith & Wesson revolvers and I don't think it's counterintuitive at all to open up a revolver just like this as a matter of fact every time i shoot a smith and wesson revolver i'm so used to shooting colts that when i'm done i find myself trying to pull back on this i'm like oh yeah this is a smith and wesson but that is a big difference in it you push on the smith to open it and on the colts you pull so there's difference number one number two another big difference is on a Colt, the majority of the Colts, the older ones, they didn't have a firing pin on the hammer. On the Smith & Wessons, they have a firing pin on the hammer. Now, I understand there's a couple of Smith & Wessons that now are made that they moved the firing pin to the frame. That's all the modern ones. I understand that there's some older Colts that the firing pin was on there, but I'm just showing you some of the subtle differences in a Smith & Wesson and a Colt. Another difference is on a Colt, the side plate is located on the left-hand side. So if you'll see, your screw for your side plate is right here. On the Smith & Wesson, 
the side plate is up on the exact opposite side. So your side plate screws are right here to remove the side plate on a Smith & Wesson. Another difference is, is on Smith & Wesson, the action can almost be worked on by anybody. It's a lot simpler action on the inside. So you can literally take the side plate out and change interchange parts. You can buy aftermarket spring kits and all that, and you can improve this action with very minimum experience and very minimum work. On a Colt, you're going to take a little bit more finesse. These things are very complicated on the inside. It has a leaf spring action, and there is a ton of stuff going on inside, <clears throat> especially on this one. This is an older... 1980s model Colt Python, a stainless Colt Python, and there's stuff stacked on top of here. It's absolutely like a puzzle on the inside of it. On the Smith & Wesson, it's a whole lot more simple to change things out. You can you can buy aftermarket stuff on this. Everything has to be hand-fitted in it. This is almost like the 1911s of revolvers. Everything has to be fitted in and everything like that so it makes things a lot more complicated now on the newer colt revolvers they simplified a lot of that stuff this here has the same smooth kind of action as the old one but there's a lot less moving parts and they made it a lot simpler on the inside and one of the examples is when i pull this trigger and hold this pull the hammer back when i release this this hammer does not move on the older one, when I pull this back and release this down, watch the hammer as I release the trigger. It's just a lot more complicated. This is the old school stuff. On the Smith & Wessons, pull it back, release it, and it does the same thing. It's just old school technology. Now, one of the biggest differences in them, and I'll use these two 357s, is when I take this Smith & Wesson and I draw it back here, the hammer, the cylinder rotates counterclockwise. On every Smith & Wesson, it's the same thing. On the Colt, when I pull it back, the cylinder rotates clockwise. That's just a Colt thing and a Smith & Wesson thing. It's how they build their guns, and it's com completely different. Now, another difference is... is on the Colts, when I pull this back and I hold the trigger down, you cannot move the cylinder at all. There's absolutely zero movement in here. On the Smith & Wesson, when I pull this hammer back and release it, you can move it a little bit. Now, it's not a lot, but you can move just a, just a slight bit. Another difference is, is on the grip, the angle is a little bit different on a Smith & Wesson. A lot of people think the Smith & Wesson is a lot, a little bit more comfortable in your hand, like it's more ergonomic. I really don't think that's the case, but I hear that all the time because of the shape of the grip on the Colt. A lot of people complain about the shape on the Colt. I don't see any complaints on it. Another difference is, is on the Smith & Wessons, the hammers are a little bit shorter on these guns. On the Colt, it's got a very extended out hammer spur on it. So you can really reach it with your thumb a lot easier than you can the Smith & Wesson. Now this has got more of a larger target spur on it, on the 44 Magnum. So does the Colt. The Colt has a large hammer spur on it. But... There's just a few subtle differences. One of the things that I've always noticed with Smith & Wesson revolvers is they aren't quite as finished off. If you look at this, um, look at this gun, I'm gonna show you real close up. Now you can see some grease on it, but you see these machine lines and all that here on the trigger. I'm gonna try and get as close as I can and let this focus in on it and show you this hammer here. I'll pull it back and everything. See. I mean, this is a great revolver. It's probably one of the top-notch revolvers you'll ever encounter. On the Colts, this is a newer model one. Everything's, like, nicely polished off and everything like that. The hammer is polished off and everything like that. 
just a little bit closer attention to detail. One of the other differences is in the Smith & Wesson's the action, just because of the simplicity of it, it's just more, I don't know, more tactile, I guess you should say. You can just feel every step in it. And with the Colts, it just, it's a real smooth action. It feels like it's on ball bearings on the inside of it. But I'm just going to point out some of the so the differences and the revolvers, you know, the actions are completely different on the inside of them. They break down from the opposite side. The Smith & Wessons tend to be a lot more simple than the Colts. I think they're equally as good, folks. It's just all personal preference. Now, um, when you get into stuff like this one right here, this one was all hand-fitted and everything back in the 80s when this one was built. So this one's going to cost a little bit more. Then one like this, it was made around the same time frame and all that. But with a little bit of work, you know, these things will work just as smooth as, as the Colt will. But I wanted to show you all the differences in the way the cylinders rotate, the, um, the way the cylinder opens up. Those are the two main ones and the lockup on them. And let you know, let me know which one y'all prefer or anything like that. Like I said, this isn't a, um, this isn't a which one is better thing. I just wanted to show you the physical differences and um, the mechanical differences in Colt double action revolvers and Smith & Wesson double action revolvers. So if you have any questions on any of these, you know, I have videos on each and every one of these guns here that I use as examples. Feel free to ask. I'll answer any questions that you want. And, um... Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching this video today, and you folks have a great day.